Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday, December 4th, 2024 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Our big order of business today is to discuss and approve funding recommendations for the fall of 2024. Uh, before we do that, as always, we begin our meetings with any general public comment that folks have having to do with CPC, the projects before us now, or CPC in general. Uh, so is there anyone out there who would like to comment? At this time, now is your chance. I'd like to make a couple comments if I could. Please, Benjamin. Yep, uh, so I'm Benjamin Spencer. I'm on Rust Avenue in Northampton. I have a name tag on because I'm actually at the Friends of Northampton Trails meeting at um, the Senior Center. So that's the blue tape, sorry. Great, talk uh, about multitasking. Huh? I, I guess I am, uh, so it's about to start. Well, so my questions, uh, I have a couple quick ones. Um, one of them was about, you know, last year at this time, um, the um, CPC had um, given money for the Connecticut River Greenway multi-use trail project. And um, that was like $535,000 that were given to that project. And then um, sometime this past year, um, the Gazette reported that MassDOT had decided the project couldn't go forward. So I was just curious, you know, what that means as far as that funding. And, um, and, you know, it was, um, yeah, what happens when something like that happens if the money goes back in a pot or, 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 or where is that money now? So that was, that was one question that I had for you. Um, and, uh, for the record, really disappointed that that project got stopped and I was really excited to see you guys fund it because I think it's an important project. So, Sarah, um, can you? Help answer that first. Sure. Question. So, Ben, I saw that you sent me an email this morning, but I, I didn't fine. get a chance to finish fine. Uh, putting well, together a response to it. No uh, so, the planning department was is still hoping to move that project forward in one way or another. Uh, gotcha. So, in some ways, the funding might actually be more critical to create a path uh, that might not meet full multi use trail standards, but is still accessible to people to connect to Hatfield. Uh, so it, it's sort of, it's in limbo for the moment, but is, is still gotcha. hope to be utilized. And, and we were disappointed too. So I, yeah, it's we, a bummer. We, we still <laughs> hope that there may be some way to move that forward at the mass out level. Awesome. That's, I, that's what I figured. And uh, that it was still somehow like hopefully in play and that yeah, it would go it, forward. Yeah, it, it definitely is. That's awesome. And I totally understand. Like I, I emailed you just this morning, like, ah, but I don't expect a same day response. So no. <laughs> um, so then my other question, two questions real quick. One was, you know, the um, I've been following the housing partnership pretty closely over the course of the year. And, you know, I'm sort of surprised that there isn't a member from the housing partnership, um, a representative on this, um, CPC, because it just seems like that would be um, such a, an important um, person to sort of share those duties. Um, you know, the housing partnerships there to look for ways to support affordable housing, which is one of the four, um, you know, uh, corners of what you guys are all about. So I was wondering if that's something that, you know, had ever been the case or could be the case, because it seems like that would make a lot of sense. That was question two. Um, Sarah, throw it back to you again. Okay. Uh, so, by statute, for communities that having a that have a housing authority, one of the CPC CPC slots is uh, reserved for a housing authority designee. Okay. It's Jeff Jones, who was um, who's been a member for a long time, and he's he's an affordable housing advocate. And the the mayor has often used one of his or her spots for a affordable housing connected person. Gotcha. Um, not not always the case, but typically something that that has happened. So there, okay. there's no way that Northampton could designate one spot or, or change that housing authority spot. That's by state statute. Interesting. OK, that answers that one. And so and then the last one is just sort of more of a I don't even know what um, cry for help <laughs> is, but it's a you know, so I've been paying attention to the um, King Street lot, the 
large vacant lot on King Street adjacent to Foster Farrar um, over the past year. And, you know, um, keep thinking that, you know, all, all four of the priorities that this group has, you know, is relevant to that lot. And I don't know how to be helpful um, as far as helping something happen there that would both, you know, would help address housing and, and, you know, it's right on the rail trail to sort of help with recreation. There could be open space and, and there's even, I think a case could be made that there's some history there. Um, that would be fun to see, um, um, you know, signage on or something like that along the bike path. So, you know, there's a hefty price tag on that lot and it would be great to see it be put to good use. And, you know, from what I've learned, you know, there's no way that like the CPC could designate funds to go towards developing that lot. It's like people need to come forward with it. I'm just, I'm just here saying like, if anybody is um, has any ideas or thoughts on the matter, like I'd be happy to talk about it with anybody. It's just sort of become sort of my white whale. So that's that's all. And and uh, as always, I thank you guys for the for the work that you do. Thank you, Benjamin. Any other public comment at this time? Uh, grow food folks, if you're out there, this might be a good opportunity for you to put your two cents in. Hey there. Hi. Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Thank you. I'm on kind of double duty here with, um, kid duty, some family stuff, but I'm happy to participate. So, yeah, so we, since the last time we met, then since you guys met, um, we received formal bids for the project. Um, and I compiled that information and sent in the bids to Sarah. Uh, and I don't know if it made it uh, to committee members, but um, two bids were received. They were much higher than we expected. So the low bid was $346,000 for the entire project. Um, so we re revised the budget um, and simplified our ask to the committee as well. In the first version of the budget, we had a couple different light items that we were asking for. But um, due to the increase in the project cost, we simplified our ask to the committee um, and asking just for money for the pavilion project. And then we would cover with other funds that we have um, the rest of the project costs. So um, we also did some research on other pavilion projects that have been built recently uh, to try to understand what is a correct price for this kind of thing. And I shared that information as well that the, the Airnasium at the YMCA, which some of you guys might have seen, it's larger than ours, but it's actually a very similar design. Um, and these projects kind of have multiple components, but one of them is the kind of the wooden structure, the timber frame structure and the roof. And then there's all of the other costs, site work and so forth. So for the Airnasium, the timber frame structure was around 178,000, but the total project cost was almost a million dollars. Um, and then there's a pavilion in Hatfield, which is just a little bit smaller than the one that we're proposing to build. And the timber frame of that, I think, was 215000 So for our project, the timber frame portion is about 120, 25, I can't quite remember. Um, and then the additional costs are for site work and the, the patio and electricity and et cetera, et cetera. So just to kind of put some points of comparison on these projects, because I think there were questions about why does this seem so expensive? And I think time and time again, we're seeing how expensive things are um, and it's not unique to our project. I think our project is below kind of comparable projects of the size. So um, happy to answer questions now or along the way, uh, but I guess I'll leave it there. Thank you. Michael, are you able to stick around for uh, when we get into deliberations or do you have to take off to attend to your daughter no i'll be here my wife just got home so i'll be i'll be here okay yeah so i'll stick around thanks good um 
do folks want to ask Michael questions now, or should we wait until we get into into that? Uh, maybe we'll just wait for a little bit, if that's all right, Michael. I was uh, actually gonna. I was gonna actually just say something real quick, if I could. Sure, please. Um, uh, I want to just first off, I wanted to thank you for for getting that back to us um, and the turnaround, and also the fact that um, uh, that uh, you were able to um, or you were willing to refocus the uh, the program given the given the um, unexpected costs. So that that's I really appreciate that kind of responsiveness from from applicants, and um, assuming that we're able to help you move forward, um, uh, you should. You know, keep in mind the fact that um, if 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 additional funds um, you feel are necessary, um, there's nothing wrong with coming back and asking us again. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anybody else want to comment at this point on the Grow Food proposal or questions for Michael that will help guide our deliberations further on? Okay. Uh, let's see, Megan, if you're there from Habitat, is there anything you'd like to share with us before we get going? Uh, no, but I'm just here to listen and answer any questions if you have them. Great. Thank you, Megan. Okay. And that there's no further general public comment, we have no minutes to approve. So move through that line item on the agenda. Chairs report a couple things. We are welcoming Deb and Bruce officially as our official ninth committee member. Uh, hooray for Devin. Thank you very much. Um, you were away last meeting. We'll hopefully you're able to perhaps even watch us and uh, good. So you know where we are and we'll sort of um, review that in just a little bit. Another thing I wanted to quickly mention was um, I do a once a week segment on Talk the Talk, the radio show on WHMP. Some of you may may hear. And I had Tom uh, Anisi on today. For those of you that I think most of you know him, for those of you that don't, he's sort of the land guy, the, the uh, under Sarah, he's the land planning assistant for the city of Northampton. And uh, I've had the Good fortune to both it to interview Wayne Fiden and uh, and his his uh, his predecessor uh, and uh, not his predecessor the, the person that came after him uh, and I, and I just am always amazed at how wonderful our city officials are how how much they serve our city how fortunate we are to have such dedicated folks um, doing the work that they do. Um, and so just appreciating Tom and Isi and, and, uh, he had on his big boots and his cold weather jacket as he's out pulling, uh, Japanese knotweed or doing whatever he, he is doing in the, uh, in, in, in a glossy buckthorn, I think is what he was saying, evil glossy buckthorn. So thank you, Sarah, for the work that you do. Thank you, Tom and Isi for the work that, that, that he does. Um, moving right along, Sarah, uh, if you could present us with sort of the latest financial report, and then if you can run us through this bonding scenarios, uh, possibilities for uh, what it would look like if we were to do the 400,000 um, tennis courts and basketball renovation that the rec department has asked. Sure. Can we do that? Um... So just super quick look at the FY25 overview, just in case anybody has any questions. This hasn't changed since last time. So local local and state match, a little bit above estimate from the state that we won't be able to spend until FY26. Um, leaves us with just over 1.9 million that's available for both funding rounds, the entirety of fiscal year 25, um, and all of the, the projects that have come in total uh, just over under 1.4 million in requests. Um, and then looking at the bonding picture for the next few years. So this column is our current
current bonding obligation, sort of the leftover older projects. So we will be entirely done with those in FY27. So that's uh, Lawrence Field, uh, Bean Aller Farm, and uh, Pulaski Park and the Pulaski Park Overlook. So the, the last of those payments will end in FY27. Uh, the bonding that's committed to, but hasn't yet um, formally gone out to bond is the Ryan Road Playground. So that was bonded out for 720,000. So these are estimates because the um, the bonding hasn't actually taken place, but this is based on 4% um, payments beginning in FY26. So this would um, go out in the bonding package in starting in the spring, but the first payments wouldn't be due until FY26. Um, so you can see over here, just sort of a, a rough estimate of what's estimated um, to be available to be spent on, on other projects based on the, the bonds that have been committed so far. Uh, and the, uh, the last column shows the max amount that would be available to bond, so the payment that, that could be made each year. So there's still a lot of capacity left, but you know, of course, if, we, if we're doing borrowing, then there's an associated interest cost with that as well. Let me stop and then pull up the, um, the estimates that Bond Council put together. And any questions while I'm getting those out? <clears throat> questions for Sarah about those sheets that she pulled up? All right. So you're pull, put, pulling up the potential bonding scenario for the uh, basketball and tennis courts, right? Oh, yeah. hold on. Mar Martha has a question. Martha? Um, yeah. Um, I should know the answer to this, but I guess I need to be reminded. So even though um, we're not paying this off immediately, um, the applicant will receive the funds to do the project, correct? Yes. Fun so funds are available immediately. So the, the Ryan Road um, school project, for example, has you know, bids are, are, have already been sought and those could be spent down at any time. Okay, so the tennis court, um, I guess I was mostly concerned about the tennis court yep. getting on the way as soon as possible. Yeah, so okay. the, as, as soon as the account is established, then those funds are able to be accessed by grantees. Great, okay, thank um, you. So here is the estimated debt service. It's the committee were to go out to bond. And these are both, um, you know, both the Ryan Road School and the, um, the JFK courts would be shorter frame bonding scenarios. You know, we um, the city can't legally go out to bond for something that would exceed the the life of its um, of the playing surface, and there's also just some additional limitations on uh, maximum schedules for those. So, unlike a land acquisition um, that can be bonded out for a long time, these are shorter time frames. Well, um, so JFK courts. Um, so again, payments wouldn't, um, wouldn't be made until FY26. Um, so if we, if the committee were to recommend bonding of the in, entire project, total cost would be about 450,000. This is based on 4% interest rates. Uh, and you can see what the payments would be every, each year. Again, estimated. No way to know until the bonding actually occurs. Questions for Sarah about about this sheet or anything else? So essentially, Sarah, borrowing four hundred two thousand means we'd be paying four hundred fifty thousand for that. So forty seven forty seven and a half thousand over it would would be the interest on that over yeah. the course of five years. Yeah, and then we would we would deduct these amounts from the on the the other. Um, Excel sheet and what would be available to uh, be spent on other projects every year. So uh, figuring about 100,000 in debt service and FY26 would reduce um, the amount available to be spent on projects by that amount. So there's um, about 1.8 million. So that would go down to 1.7. There's, it, it is, is the five year scenario, the going scenario, is there, there's no three year or uh, Bond Council thought that five years would be the most likely. Um, you know, 
there's it's the I guess it's the most attractive bonding package. There is some potential to go lower, um, but we wouldn't know until the the bonding actually occurred. Uh, questions for Sarah? Everybody's understanding this bonding scenario situation. Yes. Okay. Sarah. I'm All right. Ready. So here we go. Um, just to reiterate as a review of what we decided on two weeks ago at our last meeting was we put four of our eight uh, project uh, proposals into the shopping cart. Um, we put the, uh, the affordable housing fund at 75,000, the Pioneer Valley Habitat project at 200,000, the historic Northampton project at 64,860, and the uh, historic outbuildings uh, from the Historic Commission in at 30,000. So those are all the ones that we felt pretty comfortable moving forward with at that time where we haven't voted officially on them. We voted them into the shopping cart. That comes with my calculations to $369,860 that we have allocated. Uh, once again, we have, <coughs> excuse me, 1.944 million to spend that includes both this round, the fall, as well as the spring round. Um, our total projects have come in at 1.377 million if we were to, uh, to fully fund all of the eight projects as requested. Uh, before we do a, 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 a go round, um, are there any questions about that? about any anything to remind that we need reminded about that we're we're pretty confident that those four those four projects we are we are good to go and looking at how to move forward with the other four Martha um another um bonding question so if we were to bond the tennis courts um the, the request that is on the table, which is $402,000, um, that would get um, diverted to the future, correct? We would be paying that off in the future. We would be spending that money out of our budget in the future. Am I right? So then um, that would get put back into the amount we have to spend on other things in this round. Yeah, yeah, so, uh it would reduce future availability of funds, but would essentially make that that amount available for spending now if the committee wanted to do so. And and Sarah, that funding would not come out until fiscal year 26, is that correct? Correct. Which begins July 1st of 25. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Martha. That was that was a good point. Debbie? Um, Sarah, the one question I was going to ask you about bonding, do we have any housing projects under bonding right now? Uh, we don't, mostly because it's a little bit more difficult to bond housing projects unless they're city projects. Um, bonding for someone else's construction project isn't a, an eligible municipal borrowing, borrowing scenario. So it's not that they they wouldn't be, um, you know, it's something that would be recommended by the committee, but just something that we would have to fund in, in cash rather than borrowing. I, I'm just partial to thinking that that's the kind of bonding scenario I really like because that's those are big ticket items and those are needed things. So I'm always in favor of that. Uh, but you're right, it does have to be a, a government project, not a private investor. Thank you. Sarah, can you refresh my memory, maybe our memories, on uh, what you see coming down the pike for the spring. I know you have there's a a big open space possibility as well as a big housing possibility. Can you talk more about that? Sure. So the the two that that I know of, and there may be all sorts of other things percolating that people haven't reached out about, um, are the Crafts Avenue housing project. I know Valley CDC is looking to um, apply for and obtain federal funding and hopefully break ground beginning in uh, 2026. 
So they're planning on another request um, as well as hopefully an open space acquisition project from the city. And without revealing stuff you don't want revealed, can you give a, a ballpark on those projects? Uh, hard to say at this point. Valley CDC wasn't quite sure what they would be looking at, but it, it could be a significant ask, like maybe four or 500,000. Um, and the, the open space is in the really early stages at this point. Um, but depending on what other grants were foreseen, that, that could be maybe in the, you know, and max like 750 range. 750,000 would be the ask for us. Potentially, but again, it's it's very early so that there's still a lot to be fleshed out. Okay. So we're looking at the potential with just those two projects of a $1.2 million ask. Is that correct? Uh, potentially, yeah. I mean, th okay. things change all the time and stuff falls apart. So you, you never know. And there again, there may be other things out there that I'm not aware of. And if I could, if I may ask one more question, I'm sorry, Devin. If if the city is buying the open space, is there any conversation about partial purchase with a with an option on picking it up later and letting us spread that cost out that way? Uh, so uh, city open spaces would always be um, the, so the the CPA ask would always be for a local match for another grant. Um, in some cases, the, those grants have all fallen through for various reasons, and the, the CPA funded the whole thing. But that's something that could also be borrowed for. Okay, thank you. Martha? Um, yes, I just wanted to mention, um, Sarah, I spoke with Donna uh, Lascalia yesterday, and I think she is planning on talking with you about doing some more work on the stones in the cemeteries. Um, so that would be another for another request for the spring. But... Uh, Martha, are the stone the stones are would come out of could come out of historic money, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's conservation. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sarah, I I I think we may have had this conversation two weeks ago. Um, given the change in it in in federal administration, will that affect the ability of the city to seek out and uh, hopefully be successful in land grants for city for conservation property? Or is that going to dry up? How, what so, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, state funding I, for those types of things, I think is pretty secure. Um, hard to say about future federal funds that haven't yet been committed. So land and water conservation fund, for example, is something that the city has used frequently in the past for both open space and recreation projects. Um, that's committed out, I believe, for the next two federal fiscal years. Um, but in, given the change in administration, it, it's, it may, may be a little unpredictable in the future. And I'm sure the same could be said about different types of federal housing tax credits and, and other grant programs. But but state funds, you know, I, I think are pretty secure, at least in the in the near term. Great, thank you. Any general questions for Sarah before we get going? So I, I thought a way to begin this discussion would be to to do another general go round, and maybe people could comment generally on if they're still feeling happy with a half full shopping cart or a shopping cart with four items in it, the three hundred and sixty nine thousand eight sixty with those with those four proposals. We were uh, um, all and seemed to be all in agreement uh, to move forward with. So are are we still good with that? And any general comments before going over proposals one by one, general comments folks had on the other four. And that could be to bond or not to bond if we were to move forward with uh, JFK, um, what to do with the grow food and sort of the escalating cost of, of, of that, whether to move forward. And then of course the two other, the Mains Field uh, project, 
Um, and maybe Sarah can guide us through a little bit on, on that as well before we get going. And the fourth one is the, uh, the CDC uh, proposal for the mortgage subsidy program. So before we do a go round, um, Sarah, can you just once more your, your guide us through what the uh, Mainsfield uh, rec folks got back in an email today that you sent out? Um, can you just give us a quick overview on on that? Yeah. So it it seemed like the the bottom line was that this was a it, a very quick time frame project, and the rec department was hoping to have everything done and ready for potential grant applications in late spring, summer. So that while they seem to agree that it, yes, these are two discrete components, we wanna do one and then quickly do the other one so that we can then move forward um, with, a, you know, with a definitive plan and obtain funding or at least seek funding to be able to implement that. And if only one portion of the the project were to were to be funded, then that would delay um, grant applications potentially for another year. Uh, questions for Sarah about that document that she sent to us from the Rec Department on Mainsfield? Are we? I have a do, question. Do, uh, let me. Yeah, I was just. Is there like a new budget? Like I felt confused about the budget and maybe I didn't look like pull up the other ones side by side with those documents, but I felt kind of more confused after in terms of what actually is allocated away from it. Um, and you, you kind of just explained it well that they, it seems like maybe it's just generally like they're like, please just do all of it. But I just felt more, conf I didn't see the budget. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure if the budget was different or if they just pulled out some discrete tasks that would be able to be completed. So before it was kind of a lump sum, like here's all the stuff we want to do. And now they've, you know, they've um identified the project kickoff and management, the LIDAR survey, and the uh H and H hydraulic and um hydrologic modeling. So there so there's an estimated cost for each of those now. Okay, so it's like a D it's like zooming in not yeah yeah that that's that that's how fun. i interpreted that okay well thank you th that came to ninety thousand something right it did yeah but they're but they're requested still for one hundred fifty thousand. Um... yes and i wasn't going to bring this up in this portion i was going to wait until we got to an actual discussion um so I don't know if we want to do that now or hold off, but I got I got some thoughts on that as well. Yeah, so I I think those those ninety thousand dollar items were separate. So that was the initial, um, more like scientific component of the project, and then the the rest of it would would be the visioning session and public input. Uh, Julia, any further clarification on this rec department proposal? I don't have anything further that to add to what Anne Marie sent. She sent me basically the same content. Okay. Great. Um, why don't you hold off for just one second, Chris, and 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 we'll get to your, your comments about that in a minute. So I I think doing a go round, and again, are we comfortable with a three hundred sixty nine thousand eight hundred sixty from the four projects in the shopping cart as is? Uh, and then how, just generally speaking, how do we feel about the other four projects? Uh, and does that make sense? Everybody got that? Okay. So Chris Holman, since you had some thoughts at the ready, why don't we start with you? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on Mainsfield until we get to the discussion of it, but um, I still have unanswered questions on that one. Um, I, as I indicated earlier, I was, I was, um, I was pleased by the response that it, responsiveness of grow foods um and uh i think that's all i got for now uh martha uh yeah i have other, also have some comments on the main main field project uh questions that uh yeah i'd like to discuss um 
And I agree with Chris about the pavilion. Um, I will say I was involved in the Hatfield project where they built that $215,000 pavilion. And um, it originally came in at $400,000. So when it was reduced to um, $200,000, it felt like a, a breather. Uh, so I think they did their due diligence in getting the bids. And it's good that they got two bids that were pretty close. Um, so I think that's a good realistic measure. And I guess the other ones, um, the courts, um, I don't really have any other comments about the other two. You're, you're comfortable with the four in the shopping cart as they are? Yes, I am comfortable with the four, definitely. And Chris, yeah. you are as well with those four? Okay, great. Uh, Kevin? Uh, yeah, I'm quite comfortable with the shopping cart um, as described. Uh, my own inclination well, I was not fully, I understood the logic of saying, hey, if we do the technical LIDAR, uh, uh, topo bathospheric uh, uh, mapping, uh, now it could be out of date by the time we actually know what we want to build based on public comment. I understand that logic, but I didn't find it compelling about, no, I think you could still break these in half. Um, so uh, I, of course, if I were in that chair, would probably be advocating for the same thing. But sitting in this chair, I think uh, uh, it still could be two-phased. Um, I'm actually uh, inclined to uh, fully fund the pavilion at, at 202, as, as the request is. Um, I was a little su surprised that replacing the, the Goshen stone with pavers uh, that uh, uh, op, uh, alternate three plan um, uh, in with one of the estimates that saved only seven thousand dollars, and with the other it saved twenty six thousand dollars. And I thought, well, that's a little odd. I'm not sure how that came in, but as everybody has said, the the final estimates were pretty close, so we assume that those are uh, reasonable and realistic. So yes to the two hundred and two for the pavilion. Um, I think uh, support for bonding the entire thing. Uh, for the courts. And um, I'm actually, at this point, inclined to say, eh, if it has taken so long in the past to actually get families lined up and so forth, uh, that we could wait on uh, doing anything for the mortgage subsidy program. Jeff? So I'm good with the shopping cart. Um, the only one I really have any doubts about is the mains field because I just don't think I, I fully understand it, even with the clarification. It seems to be that they tied it together where it was all or nothing. And if it's nothing, then we open the door to another year of potential um, weather um, impacting that site uh, to be determined. And we don't really want to go there. It just seemed like there wasn't. I just didn't didn't understand how we could do part of it now and part of it later um, because they wanted the public input as a part of the overall design and they could only get so far. And would that um, stabilize the area for a year if that's what it took? Um, JFK, I'm all in. Um, two weeks ago, I was for the pavilion as presented. I think it's even better um proposal now i'm all in on that um and mortgage subsidy program we did that before and i'm in support of um continuing it and i don't find the delay um a compelling reason to um not do the program at this point and i also should say <clears throat> i'm hoping to be able to switch to uh Another Zoom meeting at 8.30, um, because we have a lot of labor meetings going on in light of the election, and I've got one that's starting at 8.30, so we'll see how that goes, but I'll leave it there. Thanks. Julia? I may unmute. Um, yeah, I completely support all four that are in the shopping cart, and I hope we can move those forward. Big fan of the Grow Food Pavilion. I think they've come back with a, a budget that I can understand and work through and uh, support funding funding that. I hope we move forward on the courts. We need we need those courts repaired. 
And I actually hope we can figure something out for Maine's field. I'm going to go back and remind folks about how much use the city gets out of Maine's field, how many people access and 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 rely on that as one of our uh, recreation areas, not just not just all the softball people, but also all the people who are down there using the pavilion for events and the volleyball courts and that that whole structure. Um, and it's really tricky to move beyond concepts into let's build something. So we do need to move quickly and to write a good solid grant that we would hope would get funded would not only require all of the hydrologic work, it does require the community input. Without that, uh, you, you know, the, the, the application you write is pretty much uh, dead in the water. You've got to have community input on that. So I am hopeful that we can really take a close look at the mains field option and um, and I support the mortgage subsidy program once again. Thanks. Uh, let me. Yeah, um, I think compared to where we were last time, I'm more supportive of the mortgage subsidy, uh, definitely supportive of the grow food pavilion, um, like the due diligence that they've shown is very, seals the deal for, I mean it was already sealed for for me I was already very committed to it but I think it just shows that like whatever amount of funding they get they're gonna figure it out um and yeah I'm, I'm feeling really torn about Maine's field uh mainly this public participation process and it might be uh like the follow-up information didn't convince me more but I think for me I have a higher standard of public participation than what I've seen in the city about these things like just a listening session doesn't feel like true public participation to me um and so for allocating that amount of money to it I'd like to see like actual participatory processes going into something like that um and I just didn't see that in that proposal and also I do want Maine's field as someone who plays softball as someone who's rented Maine's field <laughs> um you know, I'm a renter, so like having that space is really important to me as someone who doesn't have a backyard, right? Um, but I think, yeah, I just, but I don't know if that's a reason not to do it. So I think I'm ultimately for putting means field in the shopping cart with the public participation thing. And um, I mean, I think I'm more for it without the public participation thing if we could fund just not with the public participation um, piece, just because like the materials they've submitted doesn't really compel that that process is, I don't know. So that's what I would, that's my final stance on it, I think. Sorry for all the half sentences. Uh, Chris Tay. I'm fully on board with the shopping cart as it currently is. Um, I fully support the JFK courts, and I think we should bond those. Um, and if we take that 400,000 out of the requests, you know, the spend in this round, that gets us to under a million for this round, which is about half of what we have for, for both rounds. So I feel pretty good about that. And then I would fully support all the other projects um, in their entirety. And we're spending about half of what is available this round and then we'll have half for next round. So that's where I'm at. <clears throat> Devin? Um, I appreciate the four you've got in the basket. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I like the Grow Food Northampton proposal. I'm involved in doing a similar structure at Forbes Library, and the cost looks about the same. I, I don't think that's an out. It feels outrageous, but I, I think it, it it's a reflection of what it costs to build something like that right now. Um, I have a concern about Mainsfield because I see it as absolutely an engineering problem. Um, I've been involved with talking about Riverside Drive and the culverts and the damage from water there. And 
to hold a listening session and hear what people's uses for that would like to be will go all over the map when in fact the first thing you need to know is is it still viable into the future so i'm i'm the most important piece of that for me is the hydrologic study and if that came in and said you're not going to control the mill river to keep it out of the field then you you don't need the rest of that you need to come up with an alternate plan for the for the use of the area um so um, I was disappointed to see that Valley CDC's uh, proposal had no match and that it covered administrative cost. Um, it doesn't actually create more housing. It creates opportunity for certain people to get into housing. Um, I know we've done that before. Um, I can be for that, but I just want to go on record as saying it's a disappointment that there's no match and that it covers the administrative time to take care of those. Um, and I'm for the tennis courts. That's it. I, I wish we didn't have to bond them. That's I, I lament spending that because it can't be for that long a period of time. I wish they would be maintained once we do get them fixed. Great, thanks. Um, I'll share a few of my comments. One is um, I'm in full support of the four in the shopping cart. I uh, it just pisses me off that these grow food that the that these projects are coming in so high for grow food for everybody looking at pavilions. I just can't wrap my non construction minded brain around the fact that four posts and a and a top and the and the the the, the cover underneath comes in at $350,000. Um, it also concerns me a little with the Grow Food project that the, um, I, I believe it was the, the low bidder was uh, was Kiter, I'm sorry, Thay Thayer, coming in 300 and, uh, or no, it was, uh, it was Kiter coming in with a low bid and that their bid is only good for 30 days. And there's no way that we're, going to get city council approval. I mean, it's it's impossible to get city council approval, which means the low bid may go out the window that, and I don't know what what that happens and perhaps Michael can and, and help us out with that. Uh, that being said, I'm a great fan of Grow Food and would certainly like to like to see that project move forward. Um, it, it, I, I, I like the fact that there is a big conservation proposal coming in, hopefully next round. And I like the fact that the Crafts Avenue is affordable housing project is moving forward. And I would hate for us to not have money available for the two of those. Uh, I found it reassuring that if we were to bond the JFK projects, that that means that essentially 400,000 doesn't go out until fiscal year 25. So we kind of have that sitting with us. Um, but I do want to I do want to be conscious of leaving enough for these two big projects. Martha talked about a third, which is a gravestone project. We have no idea who else is what at, at this point if there if there would be other projects. That being said, I think the mortgage subsidy program, we could fund half of that or we could put that off until next round and see uh, see what 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 it looks like. The mains field, I'm all over the map on that one. I, I I tend to agree with what Devin said. I don't understand why or, or how the usage comes uh, before we have a really good understanding of the hydrology and what it means for that park to sustain what the new normal is in terms of weather events and the Mill River doing what it's going to do. And it seems like that's a first step and all things flow from that. And they do not need to quite be concurrent and why we couldn't tease those two out, but I can certainly be, be convinced otherwise. Um, what I'm hearing for all of us is that uh, everybody seems pretty comfortable with the grow food proposal uh, coming in at 200 and what is it? 200, 200,000, is that right? Uh, I'm trying to read read my writing here. Uh, grow food at 202,000, uh, 202,000. All of us I, seem to be in agreement. 
Um, if uh, Mike, are you still out there? Still here. Yep. Uh, can you can you talk about the concern with um, Kiter? I believe as the low bid, only holding yeah. on to that for thirty days, and what what that would mean for you? Yeah. So I guess. So you're talking about the the CPC makes a recommendation to city council and they'll take it up in some time. I guess I would have a question for you guys is has the city council ever rejected a recommendation from the CPC and sort of what degree of confidence could I have even after this meeting to approve the bid and move forward, which would be our intention and our hope. Uh, I think there's been one instance with city council rejecting our recommendations, and that was quite some time ago. Uh, I think they are confident that we do our due diligence in a manner that is straightforward and transparent and uh, and productive. And I, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, or other committee members, I would not anticipate uh, a recommendation for grow food not being approved by city council. That being said, it's not going to be done in 30 days. Right. Uh, yep. from when the proposal was submitted, because it takes two readings at city council, and that will not be until January something. Correct, Sarah? When would? Uh, correct. So city council, I'm assuming they meet the 19th. I, I believe they do. Um, and then would meet again. Just look at here. Um, so assuming it's approved in, in January, whatever that date is, um, then the funding wouldn't be available until the contract is signed, which can, uh, which adds a, a few weeks at the least. So not funding wouldn't be available certainly before the end of January. Yeah, yeah. I guess the only other thing I'll say about it is that um, I assume that Kiter puts those in all of their bids to protect themselves um, and give themselves a timeline. I don't know how fast building costs change and so if we waited an additional 30 days had them resubmit the bid would it be drastically different my assumption is that it wouldn't maybe it would be a little bit and that's something we would be able to to cover with our matching funds um so i guess i'd say i'm personally not worried about it uh, one part is sort of weighing the risk of moving forward without final city council approval and then the other part is uh weighing the risk of waiting, you know, an, an extra 30, 60 days, whatever it is, and um, assuming the elevated cost that that might incur. Before we move any further on Grow Food, any questions from committee members for Michael while we still have him? I don't know if you're joined by another Grow Food folk person. I see. Yeah, there. I think Elisa's, Elisa's here. I didn't know she was here, but she's here. <laughs> there she is. Any any committee questions for Michael or Elisa? Bartha? Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing um, I wondered is if because Cutter is only sticking with 30 days and, you know, prices are likely to go up after the first of the year. That's kind of how it works in the construction industry. Um, you know, is there an option to... Um, go to the next bidder um if the if the price that after 30 days gets raised 25 percent or something i mean could you do that would that be a possibility and is it something grow food could shoulder yeah i think that's the real possibility um sorry i'm being visited here i think that's a real possibility um i guess that's just the short answer um we could explore that option with the second bidder Any other questions, uh, Devin? Um, just a quick comment. I'm not surprised at Kyder putting a 30-day window on that because it's Canadian lumber products that they're thinking about. And as we all know, tariffs may be imposed on Canadian products among I didn't other... want to use that word, but the, yes, it's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions for Michael or Elisa? Okay, so we have sort of these soft motions going to put things into the shopping cart. Uh, and we seem to be all in agreement, unless I hear otherwise, that 
uh, we're supportive of the 202,000 for Grow Food. Is there a motion? And again, this is a soft one. We'll be we'll be voting again to sort of check out our items. But is there a motion to put 202,000 in for Grow Food? Uh, Julia? And a second. Is there a second? Uh, Jeff? Uh, Sarah? Right, so roll call on that. Uh, Lemmy? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Chris Hellman? Yes. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Devin? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Your name was. Into the shopping cart it goes. Um, the next one that we all seem to be in agreement about, as far as I can tell, is, is JFK. Uh, and that's the biggest proposal out there at 400000 Why can't I read how small the font is? $402,000 uh, for both basketball courts as well as the tennis courts. Uh, the question is to bond, if, if we are in agreement, to bond or not to bond. Um, if we are to bond, that puts an additional $47,500. Is that right, Sarah? $47,500 uh, um, that we would, we would pay for that. Uh, it would free up money. And because bonding wouldn't go in effect until July 1st of 2005, no, 2025. Whoops. Um, so any further discussion on that before someone puts a motion out, uh, to bond or not to bond? Well, I actually first a motion, I guess, uh, or first discussion. How about that? Any further discussion on JFK? Brian, I'm, I'm swayed by your opinion about the projects you're looking at down the road. So I would be, I would not resist bonding if that in order to protect that option. Their comments? I'd like Anyone to move wanna... to bond the JFK courts for five years, as presented okay. by Sarah. Uh, so the 400, Chris Tate's making a motion to bond at $402,000 at five years, beginning in fiscal year 20. Six. Um, is there a second on that? Second. second. Okay. Kevin gave a second. Thank you. Any further discussion? So the motion and the second is to put four hundred two thousand dollars into the shopping cart for JFK, not to be paid out now, but to be bonded at five years at four percent, um, and hope that doesn't go up and only down if which is, I suppose, a possibility. Um, um, and I, I just suggest that the committee say up to five years so that if, you know, if there's some potential to lower that to a, a, a less of a term and create some savings that um, the finance director would have the ability to do that. Great, thank you. Uh, any further discussion on JFK bonding? Again? No. No. Was, was someone saying something? No? Okay. Uh, Sarah, roll call. So roll call on um, bonding. Lemmy? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Ms. Hellman? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Devin? Yes. And Brian. Yes. Unanimous. All right, we got six in the shopping cart, two to go. Um, I think Mainsfield perhaps was the most controversial one, so let's save that for last. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, it was sort of nice that you put this time limit on us. We got to move. We got we got to move while you're still here. Um, uh, the mortgage subsidy program from Valley CDC uh, co coming into us at 250,000, is that right? 
golly, I cannot read this font. Uh, what's that? Two hundred fifty-three thousand. I can't. I can't read it. What is it? Two fifty-three. Uh, thank you. Two hundred fifty-three thousand. Um, comments on that discussion about that. Further discussion about that project. Let me. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's. Uh, basically, I would say I think that two hundred thousand is without the administrative costs. So, I'd be down to make if we're ready for the motion i want to entertain discussion but also i'm happy to make a motion for just the two hundred thousand without the cost but i know people were not feeling it at all so or half but i think we're in agreement that we could cut the administrative part of it <laughs> so we don't have to discuss that anymore at least maybe other further discussion i could i could support what lemmy just said I'm fine with it. Anybody else? Kevin? I'll, I'll offer that my sense is of the types of uh, affordable housing that we have uh, looked at and uh, funded, I think uh, direct handing of money to uh, a family is probably the least um, the least bang for the buck, uh, especially when the housing then go, becomes market rate whenever that family decides to move on. Um, so I I would be comfortable in uh, if we had plenty of money and saying yeah okay it's it's not the best way to spend money to generate affordable housing but it is a way. So if we have plenty of money, let's do it. In this case, I don't think we have plenty of money, so I'm comfortable with skipping it this round. Anybody else want to weigh in on this? Uh, let me again. Yeah, just, and I was sort of with you last week, but then when I thought about like people playing tennis or having money in their hand to buy a house, it kind of tipped me the other way. So I just wanted to like put that out there that like, even though compared to like other affordable housing things, it makes sense that like there is better affordable housing, but in terms of all the things we fund, it still feels like pretty high up there compared to other things if that makes sense, um, which I felt like I didn't think about until I left the conversation last time. So I just wanted to say that's why I'm sort of squarely in the 200,000 funding. Chris Hellman? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble finding my unmute. Um, Just to throw another thought into the discussion um while i like building houses more than buying them um i think that um one of the other factors that that i find compelling to this is is what i've learned the little bit that i've learned about um the importance of home ownership in the accumulation of of wealth and and breaking the cycle of poverty um if we can help people who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford a home do so, I think that that, in addition to being a, a meeting our affordable housing goal, has other benefits that I that I think are important. Uh, so I'm 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 including that in my in my uh, decision making process. Any other discussion on this one? mistake I I think I recall the applicant saying that um, a lot of that administrative cost it, it wasn't just for the um, the families that were selected for the subsidy but it was you know they spoke with like 33 different families or whatever when they were trying to to work that out so you know I think there is some benefit for those administrative costs and I think if we approve it at two hundred thousand, which is fine, I, I think that might get us three fifty thousand um, dollar subsidies and then administrative costs. So I'm not quite sure if we would condition it that the two hundred thousand can only be for the subsidies or or what, but I if we don't, I think if we approve for two hundred, then they're only going to give out 150 and use the rest for administrative costs. Which you know, I think may be justified. 
So my two cents, I'm, I'm fine with anything. Yeah, it, if the committee were to recommend um, the elimination of some of the administrative costs, I would need some clarity just on what flexibility they would have to be able to use that. So if, if it was just 200, I would I would need to be clear in the contract whether that was available um, only for mortgages or if any of that was available for administrative costs. Because otherwise, I'm, I'm, you know, if they submit invoices, I'm, I wouldn't know if it was in accordance with um, what the committee approved or not. Uh, Julia, thoughts on this one? I am. I'm never a fan of funding. The, the proportion of of this of this total request that's administrative is fairly large. So I'm not a fan of funding the administrative costs, but it's a program. And when you're running a program, there, there are administrative costs. And, and so if we're going to fund it, we want this program to run. If we're going to fund it. We want them to be able to uh, talk to many families and find the families for whom this is the right program. So I am going to go back to my starting point, which was I'm willing to fully fund uh, at the at the full amount requested. I'm not sure I'm willing to fund it a third time through. If we're still doing this in a few years, but I'm but I'm willing to do this again, based on the outcomes they told us about when they when they presented. Uh, Martha, I don't think you weighed in on this. Yeah, I've been really on the fence on this one um, because I do think that it is a way of um, addressing the housing problem. It's a just a different way from what we're used to and um, building more housing is always better um, and keeping it affordable. Um, I guess when I hear all the other thoughts, the way I come down on this is I would be willing to support it for one more round. I think if we cut out the administrative, I'm assuming it would be hard for Valley CDC to do this. I mean, they asked for the money. Um, I'm assuming they need it. You know, by cutting it, we're saying you don't need any money to administer this, and they do. So um, I think if we're going to do it, we should fund the whole thing and then maybe send a message that um, we need to pause for a while. Uh, Devin? I'm bothered by the scope of it addressing only four families and and a whole program that's going. I mean, you do have to go through the program. I, I understand what they're going to do to find the right families to take it. But um, I think I think we are sending a message. I think I've heard the same thing I feel, which is like compared to Habitat for Humanity building houses, it's just a very different feeling for spending CPC money to to directly buy down a mortgage. Um, but I would, I, I don't think I could vote against it. Uh, Jeff, is our housing guy, last words? Well, I was, I was um, open to um, eliminating the administrative costs because I that was my early sense of where the group was. Um, and I think um, my initial thoughts, I think, have been changed. So um, somebody said if we're gonna if we're gonna fund it, we should fund it all the way. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. And I also like <clears throat> Martha's comment about um, we should send a message that um, going forward, we're going to stand down for a while. So I, I would be in support of fully funding it. This is a project we had discussed the possibility of partial funding, of funding two of the subsidies and then half of the administration that went for that. So bring it down to 125,000. Um, does that save us all that much money? Uh, no, but 
it does, uh, as has been shared with us, it's taken them so long to find those four families that, and again, there's a lot of administration that goes with that. But but I guess I'm, uh, I've still got this nagging, oh my golly, what if we can't, what if we can't fully fund the, the, the two projects coming up? I am reassured, this is off topic a little bit, that uh, that Sarah's told us that if with a large conservation project, we can bond on that as well. So that's something that we're able to have in our in our back pocket. Um, so I I I would I would be fine with cutting this in half and funding it for 125, whatever half of what their proposal is. Um, but at least allowing some of that that portion of that for administration. Chris Tate. This is way out ahead, uh, Sarah, but can we, if we have a large project um, that's bondable, can we pay cash for a portion of it and then bond a portion of it? Is that allowed? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So looking ahead to next round, that's that's a possibility for us. We wouldn't have to bond the whole thing next, the next big open space project. <clears throat> Um, I'm, Thanks, I'm in Chris. favor that a, of, of that was a great just, question. Thank you for clarifying that. And I'm in favor of just doing half of it. Uh, I would be in favor of punting it until next round, or we could do half now and tell them to come back for the other half next round, and we'll see what's before us, and you know, pick pick it up then, or you know, um, I would support any, um, you know, any. I can't think of the word, any configuration of that. But I think it is important to include some administrative costs for them to run the program. Any other discussion on this? Yeah, I just want to build on what Chris just said. Um, this is not a this is not an all or nothing situation. Um, we, we're not at risk of losing anything if we don't if we don't fully do it, um, but we can keep uh, a potentially worthwhile program running. So I would not oppose, um, say, a, a, a 50 percent, but I would, uh, as Chris suggested, if we go that way, also include the administrative costs to go along with it. <clears throat> and having listened to everybody, I could move my position from None at all to fifty percent. Further discussion. I just have like a small thing. And it in the budget it says personnel. Like it seems like the most of the administrative cost is like parts of multiple people's jobs, if that makes sense. And I think I think I'm just curious about going forward generally administrative costs like it seems like a matter of priority of the organization. Like at a certain point when you're talking about funding point one of a position, it's like prioritizing this and within your organization. And I, I'm, I think I'm pro funding at 50%, having them come back. That's my official stance. But as we're talking about administrative parts of the budget, I think, you know, Grow Food Northampton spent administrative costs even putting their proposal up. And we should kind of consider that part of having a proposal is taking the organizational commitment of your staff time as part of the proposal and um, funding, giving extra money to pad something that like presumably your organization should be committed to insofar as you're even writing a proposal. Um, I don't know if it's particular pertinent to this, but I think if you're writing a proposal for something at, at a certain point, I don't wanna take your administrative time for granted, but at the same time, if we're talking point one of this position, point two of this position, point, you know, that is a little bit like, okay, prior have your staff prioritize this is like part of the discussion anyway. Um, so, but I'm pro 50% now and then 50% in the spring. Anybody else want to weigh in on this? Okay, can someone, someone like to make a motion? I move to fund 50% now and encourage them to come back in the spring. Is there a second? 
I'll second that. Thank you, Kevin. Motion made by Lemmy to have to fund at 50%, uh, second by Kevin. Any further discussion on this? I just want to say that Lemmy's motion included encouraging them to come back in the spring. I think we should just say we'll fund it at 50% and leave it. Amendment, friendly amendment accepted. A further discussion? Uh, Sarah? Right. So uh, motion to fund at 50% of the request amount. Um, let me. Yes. Chris Tate. Yes. Jeff. No. Martha. Yes. Julia. Yes. Chris Hellman. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Devin. Yes. And Brian. Yes. All right. Motion carries eight to one. And not, I don't know, or let the notes reflect and, and stop me if I'm putting words in your mouth, Jeff, but that Jeff's no vote reflected not a uh, not wanting to fund the project, but wanting to fully fund the project. Is that correct, Jeff? Yeah, it's correct because the, the bonding that we're doing at JFK basically solves our immediate financial crunch that everyone's worried about in the spring session. So, um. And the fact that it took them so long to find the recipients the first time around does not guarantee it's going to take that long the second time. And so I just think it's it's worth pursuing because we've already done it in the past. So thank you for that, Brian. Yeah. So make, Sarah, if you can reflect that for for Jeff. Uh, last but not least, Maine's field um, discussion about that one we're sort of in this conundrum about uh do we need both facets of the program do we want to fund it at all if so do we fund vote both facets as it is can we tease it apart and just do the hydrologic study is what we think some of us think comes first uh martha yeah so i just had a couple other comments that i wasn't i didn't make in the first go around on this. Um, I think that Devin was absolutely right on about this being an engineering project um, issue. Um, and one of the things that I guess I didn't understand, and maybe Sarah, you can explain this, is the area that they're modeling, most of it is downriver from Maine's field. So I'm not sure, I don't really understand that. Like, how is that? You know, what are they, why are they modeling an area that's downfield because down or downriver because downriver isn't necessarily going to, I would think upriver would be impacting the, um, the site, but maybe there's something I don't understand. I mean, water usually doesn't flow, you know, in two directions. Um, well, so I anyway, think, that, I think it might when it floods, it kind of gets backed up if the capacity downriver isn't there and that's the backup. That causes the flooding. So, is it mostly the is that where most of the water is coming from? The backup down river because there, there's a very small they're 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 modeling a very small area above the field. That was not clear to me, and maybe yeah, maybe it's a just something that the engineers understand, and I don't. It was it just raised it. Um, but the other thing is, I was concerned about the length the the way this. Um, public engagement is structured. I guess let me have picked up on this too. They're condensing this to into a three day visioning workshop, um, basically doing this all of this in a three day period to kind of keep the momentum going and keep the interest up. And, um, and you know, I have a lot of experience doing public, um, um, public engagement around design and planning projects. And um, it's a lot to ask people to spend three days on a site like this. Um, and I just wonder, you know, three days in a row, people dedicating their weekend or whatever. Um, it's got to be a weekend because people work. I, I just that just seemed a, a very difficult thing to pull off. And I know they're trying to get this done in a very short period of time. Um, but it, I just really question the success of that or the yeah, what the success of that approach would be. Um, 
So I guess my take on this is I, I would be, I know that they're trying to get um, a design done so they can apply for grants, that's clear. Um, but I think Devin pointed out, and I agree that you don't know whether design is even feasible. You can't even really make that determination unless you get a clear sense of what's going on from a civil engineering standpoint and a hydrology standpoint. Um, so my um, feeling about this is I think the study is very important. I think it's going to be very important for funding sources that they're going after to see that they've done a very thoughtful and thorough job on this. So answering my question maybe about the water upstream, I don't know. Um, and I would be in support of doing that piece of it. And I know it's going to delay them, but I, I would imagine that um, a funding source that they are uh, thorough and critical enough, they'll be looking at how much time is spent developing this, uh, studying it and developing these all this design alternative. So that's my feeling about it. Sarah, can you answer Martha's first question about uh, study being done downriver rather than no up river, right? Rather than down river. Yeah. So they um it's specified in the additional materials that they would be looking in an area. I just where did it go? Between Bliss Street and Clement Street. So that's basically the reach of river that Mainsfield sits in. Um so they're they're looking at both the upstream direct flooding and and any back pressures. Um, so that that seems like it it would incorporate the the whole reach of the river. Does that make sense, Martha? Um, I guess I just um, yeah, I just don't know how that determination was made because a really a good portion of it is below the field, and so maybe Chris is right that that's where all the problem is happening. I mean, Devin, maybe you know something about this too because you've been involved with the culverts. Yeah, no, I, I accepted Chris's logic. You're trying to have, get get the water somewhere to go so it doesn't come back up a, over the field. Um, and my other comment, while I've got you all, um, the, the hydrologic study would be of use to the DPW. I, that, I know that's not supposed to be our consideration, but it is uh, it is needed. And it would that piece of it, I'd love to have done. Sarah, I was, I was confused with what was presented um, today um, from the rec department. How how do we tease out what the hydrologic study is as opposed to what the use use of the park study is? Was there well, the, what was the, the 90, um, was the ninety thousand for for what? So the ninety thousand was the H and H modeling, the lidar survey, and the the project management piece of it so that that 90,000 would encompass all of the the you know scientific study of the river if you will and none of none of the public engagement and this the additional 60,000 uh in, includes those public engagement activities and um, ideas for future uses of the park okay so 90,000 is a hydrologic and 60,000 is the public engagement other comments questions that folks have about this. Chris Tate? I, I can't really speak to the public visioning process, um, but I do think part of the, you know, they, they say it here in the, uh, who is this, Fustin O'Neill uh, breakdown. They say the proposed concepts uh, developed during the visioning workshop will be assessed using the model to define potential flood reduction, floodplain restoration limits. I think a lot of uh, what would come out of the visioning is um, uses for the field that are flood resilient. And I was trying to, I, there's a picture in my head and maybe they presented it um, to us, but didn't submit it to us of, you know, what, you know, what are, what are some things that they can put in that can withstand flooding that is going to happen without completely ruining the infrastructure of the park. And that seems like a very important thing. And getting that visioning in to integrate with their model and factoring in that there will be flooding in the park, but the facilities that you're putting in aren't bothered by the flooding is I think what they're they're after. I think that's what they're trying to do with this. So it's not 
you know, rip wrapping the sides of the river so it never comes over or putting a, a levee there or something. It's it's actually having the park work with the flooding that we know we're gonna get. Um, so I think it all kind of is related. Um, and, you know, what Julie was saying about having that public engagement process is being very important to grants that you're that you're pursuing for this work um that all made a lot of sense to me so to me i think i don't think we should try to tease it out i i see it as one big project but again i can't really speak to like the three day is that too fast um you know that's that's not my area of expertise it, it does seem like it would be fast maybe if they did it you know, over a three week period instead of a three day period, maybe they would get more engagement that way. Um, but I don't know that's our place to tell them how to do that or to condition up the funding in that way. But I do um, I do feel like it should be one project and not try to tease it out. Uh, Jeff, my clock says you just have a couple minutes left. Do you want to weigh in on this? Um. I just, I think we need the hydrologic part immediately to to see where things are going. That that was my initial thought, but I I was I was worried because this the stuff that we were given today or late Tuesday it just seems to suggest that um, we need to move on this ASAP and we need the whole thing done. And the public input is an essential part of trying to figure out how to how to deal with it. But um, you know, I'll support the sense of the group. Um, it, I, so far, it sounds like I'm I'm hearing people want to separate one part from the other, and and that's that's fine with me. But it, this is not my area of expertise either. Uh, Julia, I'm curious as to hear your thoughts on this three day what one on the proposal in general again, and also this sort of three day time period for doing an input. As a number of people have said, that boy, that's a lot of time spent by local folks. Yeah, um, but let me go to the first thing first before I talk about the three days of input. So, so what Chris said is 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 an accurate depiction of what we've been talking about on Parks and Rec, and what we've been looking at in terms of the way other cities and towns have managed parks that are in flood flood plains. It's not that you you say, well, it's going to flood. Uh, the hydrologic study shows it's going to flood again and again. So let's give up the park. It's it may be prone to flooding in certain instances, and here are the mitigation things that we can put into this area. So can we actually put some floodwater storage areas into our park and still have the park as a viable place to uh, in which we can engage? Can we do some kinds of green infrastructure that, that help mitigate uh, the flood? And I think it's South Hadley that's done some of this with their park. The reason I bring up South Hadley is because the way that they've gone about doing this is through a parks grant. And to get us into position for a parks grant so that Maine's field is not a, it's gonna flood, give it up, uh, means that we, that we do have to do this process. And we're hoping to do it with some speed because our suspicion is it is gonna flood and we don't know when it's next gonna flood again. And we'd like to preserve to the extent that we can the use of, of the mains field area. Um, three days, yeah, it, that's fast. Uh, it, 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 you know, uh, I think the hope is to engage uh, folks who, who use it, who are pretty active and, and already engaged uh, and get them involved, but also to engage uh, the, uh, the neighborhood um, and and so I think that it's not always going to be three days of the same people, but there are many groups that 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 they hope to bring in. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if 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 the group that's going to be doing the public piece, uh, I don't know how hard it would be for them to modify their approach to it. Um, but I do know what our end point is. Our end point is, can we come up with a plan to continue to use Maine's field? 
knowing what we think we know, which is we're probably going to get some flooding again. Uh, Kevin, thoughts for the, on this project? Uh, yeah, as, as I said initially, I uh, still believe it is a, uh, a project that can be done in phases, that there will be learnings generated by the uh, bathospheric topographical mapping process that will say, well, here's what's possible. Here's what you can do if these are the volumes of water. Here's, given the topography, where things could be stored, where things could be redirected, but, and that that will be useful information before you get people together um, to talk about what they wish to have there. And uh, I, I've, uh, I've been party to, I, I, I facilitated the North Pleasant Street uh, visioning work uh, several years ago, and um, that in itself is a major thing. I understand why it's going to take a lot of hours to do that, um, but the idea that you're going to come up with some clear um, uh, priorities and everybody will be in alignment is probably an illusion. There will be many different parties with many different, often conflicting uh, priorities that come out of that, and I think it would be very helpful first to know what's possible. Uh, Chris Hellman, have you weighed in on this? Um, I really appreciate what I've heard from my colleagues and, um, I, I, and I, I wish that, um, the proposal had as clearly articulated the goal of the project as, as Julia did. Um, I think that that's been a part of my frustration all along, which was that the proposal itself even after today's or yesterday's submission still leaves me um, curious about how the money's going to be spent. And I'm, I'm focusing particularly on the $60,000, but I take her point from earlier that um, grant proposals that come without a, a, a usage visioning component are, are, are dead in the water. I, I don't know about that. I don't write these kinds of grants, but, but I, but I'm, I'm, that makes sense to me and I get it. Um, I actually don't think $150,000 is too much to spend on this. Um, I just I just wish that it had, hadn't taken us so long to get to a point where I felt comfortable about it. But I get maybe that's, you know, maybe I should maybe I shouldn't feel that way. Maybe I should be glad that that's the process that we have and that's how we work through these things. Um, I just I at every step I have felt that I'm 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 still not as adequately informed as 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 I would like to be. So I really appreciate uh everybody's comments and and particularly um Chris's and 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 Julia's formulation of of what they what they see the grant being able to do for us. It seems to me a simple solution is to stop climate change from happening and then we wouldn't see any flooding and then we wouldn't have to worry about this so um sarah if you can put in the minutes that i think i'll speak for the group we want climate change to stop and see if that that helps uh has everyone had a chance to speak on this i can't remember if i i did earlier i don't know if i did around oh do it again let me if you I feel the need I think Julia's comments have convinced me. I think, I mean, public input to me without actually any decision-making power is a little bit like meh, but I think also if you're doing a hydraulic study, getting public input alongside the study is going to go better than introducing change because of the hydraulic study later and then the back. Like, I do think getting buy-in early on something like this with so many invested community members is good because if you just introduce change because of a study later and, and they're not part of like, if it's not a simultaneous process, we may run into a lot of, like I'm thinking of picture Main Street, for example, like, you know, there's people who just are, I mean, I don't want to, I'm not going to bring in a controversial thing just to do it. But point being is that bringing people in early is helpful for public buy-in, public involvement. And so I think I'm pro giving some money to, getting public input early along with the hydraulic study because perhaps people can feel bought in and involved instead of just being told, oh, this is what has to happen or can't happen because of XYZ professionals. 
generally people don't love being just like told stuff and so I think some of what Julia said convinced me along with some other analysis around like yeah I don't I think handing down a hydraulic study to the softball community might not go great <laughs> um and if we get by in early that would be better so I'm prepared to fully fund anybody else want to weigh in on this Martha um, I'm just curious, the grants that um, are being considered for this implementation, what are the deadlines for those? Does anybody know? Sounded like Sarah, they you? were looking at a, a park land, I forget the acronym, park grant, uh, which is typically due like July-ish. Okay. Yeah, parks, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just wondering if, you know, this could be, you know, we could fund the hydraulic part of it and then ask them to come back in this, you know, the winter and we can consider the second part of it. Um, but it doesn't sound like that time frame is probably going to work for what they want to achieve. So. Sarah, are you been a part of a lot of these charrettes and these visioning projects do you, you just do you want to weigh in on your thoughts on this yeah i mean i guess it kind of it depends on on what the the goal is and who is involved you know based on the comments that were already received there's a really highly engaged group of users all with varying interests who have a, a lot at stake so they may you know softball may be able to rep to designate one or two people to represent them at these meetings and maybe have some rolling input so this project seems like it it would lend itself better to a a three-day intensive charrette than something that it, the people maybe don't care about as much Evan. Brian, I know you were teasing when you said we would just stop climate change, but at the core, this seems too optimistic to me. The idea that baseball players are going to keep playing baseball there and we can build a park that will be uh, capable of handling the floodwaters when they come. I, I know that you can do some things, but I, I, I don't see the future of this park being the past matching the past and I say that just based from driving on the road and talking to the DPW about the culverts and and the and the understanding of what the Mill River is going to do so that's sort of to, to call the public together and do a charrette about what you would like to have happen in this park really depends on the engineering that could be applied to the area to make it not flood Yeah, and Devin, I think some of the discussion will necessarily need to be, you know, we're going to have to lose some of this area. You know, what are the things that we could do without here? Like, do we need this much parking? Do we need a road? Do we need, you know, what can we sacrifice? How can we reconfigure things to work with the river and the, you know, the the changes that we expect to see? So it's it won't be a, you know, what, like a, you know, broad vision and, you know, what are all of the things that we want? It's like, you, what, what can we live with? What, what can we, what can we reduce and still have a park that we can. Yeah. Have? I apologize for sounding so pessimistic, Sarah. No, I mean, it, it, I mean, it is pessimistic. I mean, we've, we've used this park in, in a way that it really isn't sustainable in the future. And it's really, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a coming to terms with what we can live with moving forward. A little bit scary, isn't it? Because if you think about the Mill River, the other thing we just funded on the Mill River, or we think we're funding on the Mill River, is Grow Foods Pavilion. That place flooded. Same when our parks flooded, that flooded too, and and that that was that was pretty devastating to the Grow Food uh, area. So, yeah, I mean, we are we are funding things that are. Uh, we've yeah, we're putting ourselves in the way of the waters. And and part of the challenge with Maine's field too is that you know, Grow Food Northampton floods and they know it will flood and it will flood in the future, but it's 
the extent of it is different than it is at portions of Maine's field where the damage isn't coming from the inundation. It's really coming from the velocity. So how can we address that velocity or can we address that velocity and how can we work with it moving forward? Can I throw another oar in there in the water? Um, one of the things that um, we learned about when we looked at stormwater a decade ago was that uh, the Mill River, uh, particularly in comparison to the Connecticut River, is an extremely volatile body of water. Um, it rises and falls feet in hours. Um, and, uh, I think, I think the point has been made by several people that it's, it's, it's overly optimistic to assume that we'll be able to continue to use this, is this facility the way it's currently done. So I think that the engineering will tell us what the limitations are and the visioning will tell us how to, how to best utilize them and that the two can go hand in hand and probably should, uh, but we still have to have the engineering. Uh, that that that's the part. That's the essential component. Um, and and uh, you know when we first looked at this proposal, I was like, "There's no way you can keep Maine's field dry. You can't do it." Um, and what what I realized now is that, and that was what the stormwater people were doing was keeping the city dry. Um, what I realize now is that that's not the appropriate approach for Maine's field. The, the appropriate approach for Maine's field, as I see it, is how do you make it rebound? How do you make it, how do you minimize the impact of, of what's inevitably going to happen? And how do you create a facility that accepts those efforts and, and exploits what's still available? So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do both. I just, as I said earlier, I just wish that there had been a little, little more clarity a little earlier in the process. Any other discussion on the uh, Mainsfield proposal? Is there a motion out there? Fund Mains Field in the amount of one hundred fifty thousand. Is there a second? Uh, Chris Tate, right? Was second. Yes. Okay. So Julia made the motion for fully funding at one hundred fifty thousand. Chris Tate, the second. Any further discussion? Sarah. The roll call on that. Let me. Yes, Chris Tate. Yes. Martha? No. Julia? Yes. Chris Hellman? Yes. Kevin? No. Devin? No. And Brian? Uh, no. Uh, motion fails. It's a tie. What Where's we miss, Jeff? Jeff. Jeff had to leave, so we we miss him on this. Uh, okay, is there an alternative motion? I'll move the hydrologic study uh, be funded, and uh, phase two, uh, we'd be willing to look at uh, subsequently. And that's to the two. That. That's to the tune of 90, what was it? 90,000. 90,000 even, is that right? Okay. And I'll second that. So second by Martha. Uh, further discussion on this? I think I'll just say like being a part of the softball community and knowing the community, I worry about only funding that part and not, and not having them be simultaneous processes. I think if it, if it, even if in, in the scenario where like the hydraulic study says this site is doomed, we need a new one. I think having community input during that pro during that breaking of the news will be really important. Um, and the backlash of not having that, if that is the outcome of the report is, uh, makes me, feel like it might not have as much 
utility to fund at all because um, community buy-in is important. So I'll just say that. Any other discussion on this proposal to fund the hydrologic study in at $90,000? Sarah? Right, so roll call on 90,000 partial funding. Lemmy? No. Chris Tate? Yes. Uh, Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Uh, Chris Hellman? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Devin? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Right. Motion carries. I missed Julia's vote. Was that a... Julia, what was your vote? My vote was yes. Quiet. The respondent, yes. Yeah, and I'm also testing out this use your space key for only temporarily unmuting. So It works pretty well. That. Um, okay, so we have in our shopping cart uh, six projects that are uh, fully funded, and those are the Affordable Housing Fund to the tune of 70, 75000 the Grove Food Pavilion at 202000 Cook Avenue Housing at two hundred, the Shepherd House at 64-something, the historic outbuildings at 30,000 and the JFK at 402,000, but that is to be bonded, fully bonded for five years or perhaps um, a, a, a less time than that. Uh, and not to not to be to come out of our funds until the next fiscal year. Mainsfield we're funding at 90,000 and the mortgage subsidy program at whatever half of 253,520 is. Sarah, do you have that 126,000 something or 7,000? Can you just give us that? Well, while she's working on that. Um, right. So that's 126760 126760 Any further discussion about any of these projects? Do that we have a grand total? Um, in the less grand total, Sarah. So the grand total, I guess, if do we want to take the 402000 out of that grand total? Sarah, can you do that? Yes, please. Work your magic. Uh, so you're looking for the total that's coming out in, in cash? Yes. Okay. All right. Give me a second. <clears throat> While Sarah is working her math skills on that, these are all in the shopping cart. Uh, we can take them all out at, I'll, I'll refrain from talking, Martha. Um, I just wanted to say that I think it's important for us to convey to the rec department how um, we really do see the importance of the public engagement piece of this and, um, you know, encourage them to um, reapply for more funds to, um, you know, do, do some engagement around it. And I would encourage them for the spring round, um, you know, at, at that point, um, we may know more about uh, what's going on there with that site. You know, there needs to be a really thorough site analysis done. And I think um, that's, you know, what we're doing. But we, I want to make sure it's conveyed that we encourage them to, um, to follow up. Thank you, Martha. I'm sure Julia will do that as well. Sarah, you can pass that on uh, to Anne-Marie and others as well. Thank you, Martha. Uh, Sarah, did you get that? bottom line for yeah. us so the uh the total um 
and if this sounds wrong, then jump in anybody. So 788,620 is what will be allocated from available cash this round. Um, and then add in the uh, the, the bonding, and uh, not including the interest, but um, so the total project recommendations will be 1,190,620. Of which seven, 88620 comes out of the at this portion at this time. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh now when we go through, when we're going to checkout, we can Sarah can take us through all items at once, or someone could request that we remove an item. We're not we have sort of soft votes on all of these. Um, so someone can make a motion to move the shopping cart through checkout rather than having us take us through eight additional eight more roll call votes. We could take one roll call on all eight projects going in there. If someone feels strongly for reconsideration of a project, they can make that motion as well at this time. Um, does that make sense? I think that's how we've done it in the past. Yes? Okay. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion to take a project out and, excuse me, reconfigure it in any way, either more, less, or not at all. Okay, not hearing any motion for that. Is there a motion to approve the 788,620 uh, plus the 402,000 in bonding for this round of proposals? Can someone make that motion? So moved. Okay, Kevin, thank you. Julia, a second. Yeah, Sarah? So, vote on that. Let me? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Chris Hellman? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Devin? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Right, unanimous. And I think the nose can reflect that, again, that uh, Jeff had to leave early. Uh, we don't know how he would have voted, but just, just reflecting that. Uh, Sarah, uh, council orders, how, how do you want to proceed with that? So council uh, orders, we don't have before us, but if it makes sense for the committee, maybe one or two of you could volunteer just to spell check and get those things that I, I always miss in it, no matter how many times I read them. Are, are we allowed to do that without then formally voting on them? Yeah, and since you voted on the the recommendations themselves, you don't need to have the orders before you unless you want to. We could certainly schedule another meeting to do that. Um, but it it might change the timeline a little bit. I I always try to concisely summarize what the committee has discussed in the when when do we where generally add. sorry to interrupt. When do we generally add conditions or have a discussion of conditions or are we good on that? <laughs> I think generally we try to do that now. It is getting to the nine o'clock witching hour. Um if we felt uh, uh able to do that at this time or we do we schedule another meeting in two weeks. So are, are I don't have any, I, I, yeah, I don't have any, so I'm good at this point, but I just wanted to make sure that we, everybody had an opportunity if they felt differently. Thank you, Chris. Let's do a, a go round. Are there conditions that we want applied to any of these proposals? Uh, I, I guess the only one that sort of jumps out at me is the uh, mortgage subsidy program is we're just having half of the of, of their request go for administrative stuff. I guess there's no condition for that, is there really? Yeah, no. I mean, I would I would just make it clear to them that you know, you're we're 
this will be for two mortgages for fifty thousand, and the the remainder will be for administrative costs. And um, right, to make it clear that the thank you, Sarah. They can't ex exceed the two mortgage costs and admin. Great, thank you. Any other conditions that folks want to put on this, on any of these proposals? Okay, so Sarah, I I think this means that our business is done as long as a couple of us, you can send stuff out, a couple of us can spell check that's not in violation of open meeting laws, correct? No, okay, on the, on the conditions. City Council will look at this in two weeks, we think. Yeah, so this would um, this would be a first reading on December 19th. And, December. Um, and and if anybody else wants to volunteer, you're welcome to. But Martha and Brian, you, you are both always great at catching my small mistakes. So bring it on, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> happy, we're Thanks, happy Martha. to do that. Um, uh, and then the second reading would be the first Thursday in January or the just, yeah, that's just, New Year's yeah, Day, isn't it? The council's meeting the second and the sixteenth, according to the city calendar. Okay. Yeah. The the of, the second of January. Okay. Oh, so that okay, great. Thank you, Lim. So hopefully we'll have good news by the that first. And then, you know, they they may refer it out to finance committee. Um but typically it's just the, those two readings at two council meetings. Okay. Any other comments about, to, uh, about tonight? So Sarah, um, you got asked you... for a total for what we'd funded and I came up with 788620, not including the um, tennis courts. Is that your number? Yes. Thank you. Right. I know the other thing that we've done at the end of each funding cycle is just to do a quick go round in terms of uh, how we felt about the session, since this theoretically would be our last meeting until February. Is that is that correct? And by that time, we will have I will have forgotten everything that happened in the previous calendar year. Um, do we want to do a quick go round? Are there any any things that work well that people want to note? Any things that did not work well for us? Uh, changes to be made for the next round, which seems like it's going to be a a a, a full one. Uh, Devin, um, did I make anyone uncomfortable joining this train in progress? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was trying to sneak in and be ready when they finally got it done. Thank you. Evan, I really appreciate your institutional knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I was thinking about uh, Bill Breitbart. We could have told Benjamin about him. And then there was a, a, a another housing person that was on with us previously. Uh, she stayed on for years. Yeah, there were there's. Always, and I, th I thought of it afterwards too. There, there have often been uh, housing partnership members who were on the CPC. We just don't have any mechanism to create a designated slot for them. Yeah. Uh, Chris Hellman. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, this, I, I found this to be a really tough round, and in part, it had to do with the fact that we have had some really good competing proposals and and some fiscal constraints. Um, but I really benefited from the wisdom of my colleagues and I, I, I enjoy working with you and learning from you. And of course, Brian is always your leadership is instrumental in making all the trains run on time. So I thank you for that. Thank you, Chris. Kevin. I uh, pretty much want to echo what Chris just said uh, that I think the process of doing the two phases of uh, putting things in a shopping cart and then coming back and revisiting them is a good, and, and you're, Brian, you're facilitating of going around. Um, I'm used to groups where it's more whoever wants to speak. And I think you're 
pointing to people and asking them questions is a, a good way of ensuring um, that the discussion is rich. And I think tonight's discussion was especially rich and I learned and uh, changed some of my thinking. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Lemmy? Yes, similarly, I think the process here, I'm like, this is, I, yeah, your leadership, Brian, everything everyone else said. Um, one thing I'm thinking about is uh, perhaps considering in the next round um, some sort of conditions for some historic funding around, like, I was trying to look up other, like, Parsons was a slave owner. I didn't find anything, but just trying to think about different conditions we can put on historic stuff to prevent like glorification of various historic wrongs. And so um, I know that's like a whole endeavor. <laughs> and I don't think that that's necessarily our responsibility, but it just came up because um, I'm like, I don't know who this Parsons guy is. I don't know what he was responsible for. It sounds like he did some cool things, but I'm not hearing about his whole life. So, you know, Martha, maybe I can connect with you about that or whatever, but it's just on my mind and I don't want to leave the round without saying it. Let me, I, I did see that the, um, the, I want the long name of the committee, but the, the racialized harms committee will be releasing their, their final report tomorrow. And one of their bullet point recommendations was that, um, the, that CPA funds be used to contribute to reparations. I don't know what the details of that look like or, uh, how in detail they get, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And certainly let me something to share with um, Betty and Lori at Historic Northampton. Yeah, I just don't know within my like, like, it's interesting being in like a funder role and then reaching out to people who apply for funding. Like, it's an interesting power dynamic. So I don't want to like, reach out without like consensus from the committee or what you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do it as a person or I could just say I'm me. But yeah, it just feels like an interesting power dynamic to navigate with like, that particular thing. But maybe okay. that's Something tells me historic Northampton will be back. I wish. <laughs> wish, I, wish. <laughs> uh, any other comments about how things, what to do differently next time or what worked, what didn't work? Uh, Martha. Um, yeah, I just, I concur with everyone. And Brian, I, um, I really appreciate your um, providing a, uh, a forum that's very comfortable for different points of view to be expressed because I think we all come to this with different backgrounds and different knowledge and different priorities um, and I just feel um, really appreciative that we're able to comfortably and safely <clears throat> express our thoughts and opinions um, you know in a very civil and gracious way so thank you. Thank you Martha. Anybody else? Uh, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Uh, Sarah, you'll send us out a, um, at least send Martha and, 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 and me the uh, conditions so we can take a look at that, or the council orders rather, and we can take a look at that for spelling stuff. And then you can send us out sooner is better uh, the calendar for next year uh, would be would be helpful. Uh, as always, it's such a pleasure being with, surrounded by such intelligent, passionate, and committed committee members. I appreciate everything that everybody does. And I hope everyone has a wonderful snow day maybe tomorrow. Is, that, is it snowing? Can anyone see outside? I can't. Uh, I think it it just started. it is. There we go. Maybe there will be a a snow day for those of us who want them, and for those of us who don't, it will be at what it is. Uh, and we will see you in February. Sarah, as always, thank you for your work and good luck keeping all those projects going. Out of the senior center. <laughs> Out of the senior center. Thank you, Sarah. Thank Thanks, you, Sarah. Sarah. All right. Thank you all Thanks, so Sarah. much. All right. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, all.